Council. Could we have the roll call by the town clerk, please? Chairman Swift Kayada. Here. Councillor Backer. Here. Councillor Fred. Here. Councillor Lent. Here. Councillor McKenney. Um, if I could interject, Councillor McKenney is ser serving his active military duty service um, in Fort Dix, so he will not be here for a couple of weeks. Councillor Mole. Here. Councillor Robert. Present. And the town manager is here out there. The town clerk. Here. Okay, thank you. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we have that. Okay. Um, our first item of business this very hot evening um, is a presentation to the state champion boys track team. And I'm going to ask Councillor Lynch, who has a very personal interest in this team, to make that presentation. Okay. Joan Benoit Samuelson is with us. Welcome, Kevin. Thanks for coming. Okay, could I um, call uh, uh, Kevin Harrison and Keegan Toot up to join us? They are the captains of the boys' track team. Um, I understand that Dave Weatherby, the uh, coach, is um, away on business. Um, so Dave Weatherby could not be here with us tonight. But um, these guys have just been absolutely amazing. Um, I, as Ann mentioned, I have a son on the team, so I have watched them, uh, not just this season, but going back to sixth grade, probably, um, in the middle school, and uh, it was just awesome to watch, not just in the States, but um, this weekend, um, Kevin was um, in the New England for the triple jump and the long jump, and um, Keegan was in the New England for the pole ball, and uh, there was a 4 by 800 in the New England. And although the girls' team did not win, I think I would be remiss if I didn't mention Elise Moody Roberts winning uh, the 1600 um, for, in the New England for the girls. So it's been a very exciting track season. And with that, I will read this proclamation. Uh, whereas the Cape Elizabeth boys' track team earned the 2005 Maine Class C state championship and whereas the championship meet in Westbrook included 30 other teams and the victory led to the first state track championship since 1984, and whereas the points needed to win the title came from 11 events, including the long jump, the triple jump, the pole vault, the 100 meter hurdle, the 300 meter hurdle, the javelin throw, the 800 uh, relay, the 4x100 four relay, the 4x400 four relay, and the 4x800 relay, and the 3200 meter individual race. And whereas Coach David Weatherby led this balanced and devoted team in the finest tradition of Cape Elizabeth track and field, now, therefore, be it resolved by the Cape Elizabeth Town Council that we hereby congratulate the Cape Elizabeth boys track team on the state championship, and we salute them, their coaches, their parents, and all others whose efforts helped lead them to this victory. Congratulations. Thank you very much, and good luck next year. Thank you. And Joan, thank you for coming. I'd just like thank to congratulate uh, Keegan and Kevin. I had the opportunity to watch them at the Southwestern meet at uh, Gorham High School. And uh, even though they beat Freeport, um, we, were, <laughs> we were happy to applaud them and their outstanding efforts. And uh, I also want everybody to realize how long ago 1984 was. It was a long time ago. <laughs> Congratulations and uh, continued success. I'm sure the entire council 
Joan, that joins Joan and Marianne in congratulating the teams, both the girls and the boys. Okay, next item, minutes. Do I hear a motion? Uh, I'll move approval of the minutes of the meetings of um, May 9th and May 11th, 2005. Is there, okay, it's been moved and seconded. Are there any corrections or any comments? Council Fritz? Yeah, I just wanted to um, make note that um, my report and correspondence about the new process of sorting uh, recyclable materials um, was not quite as it um, said in here. It, it should be that paper and paperboard could not be placed in one container. And I also talked about number one and two plastics, all, all number one and two plastics, not just uh, in there on that box. Okay. Any other additions or corrections? Hearing none, all in favor of the amended minutes? It's unanimous. Six, zero. Reports and correspondence. Are there any counselors that have anything to report? Councilor Moult? I would like to mention for all those that are viewing at home that this Saturday, June 18th, is Cape Elizabeth Family Fun Day, which starts with a parade at 10.30 a.m. Uh, over near the Cape Irving stations, going down Shore Road to Fort <coughs> Williams, followed by uh, events all day long for the children, uh, there are a whole series of bands, uh, goes right on into the evening. There are uh, fun in the foam at four o'clock, but then there are still three bands that come on, as well as a DJ, after fun in the foam. So I hope everyone will come down and then enjoy the fireworks at 9.30. Thank you. Councilor Lynch. I have just a couple of uh, quick items. I just wanted to um, mention that the Comprehensive Planning Committee um, which is looking at and rewriting our 13-year-old comprehensive plan, had its first meeting. Um, the meetings are open to the public, and the second meeting is this Thursday night at 7 p.m., and it will be at Town Hall in the room right behind us here, so the public is um, welcome to attend that. And secondly, uh, the School Building Committee met um, just last week, and I'm the council representative on that committee and I just wanted to mention to all of you that um, we had a great report uh, on both the kindergarten and the high school. We also had a tour of the high school. The high school is about 60 percent complete. It is um, running right on schedule, maybe a little ahead of schedule. The kindergarten is complete, as you all know, um, came in uh, about 10 percent under budget always good news. Um, there's about $133,000 left. Um, there is, you recall, a long list of things that were not funded in high school the first time around. So um, the school board will be coming back and asking to use the money that was left over from the kindergarten. And um, I, I encourage them to have another tour for all of the council before that request goes on to our agenda, I know you'll be um, pleased to see what's going on in the high school. So that will um, be, that request will be coming to us next month and um, presumably a tour invitation will go out to all of you in the next couple of weeks so that you can see what's gone on in the high school and more importantly, I think what remains that is not funded that they would like to use that leftover kindergarten money for. So. I um, just wanted to mention those two things. Great, thank you. Is there anything else? Jack. <laughs> thank you. I just want to thank, uh, a, I think it was 35 volunteers that showed up for the uh, National Trails Day that Kate participated in the, uh, this past Saturday. They cut out, were able to cut out a trail from Spurwink Avenue to the new bridge that goes across Spurwink River. And I commandeered another four or five people, and we widened out another trail that uh, needed some additional work on it. The trail to Fowler Road, uh, unfortunately, did not get accomplished. Uh, uh, there was much more work needed on the trail going through to Spurwink River than I think people really 
realized, but it was a, a great effort, it was a great day to work, and it was really nice to see that many people showing up to help out on, uh, as volunteers on a project of that nature. And the town planner was there with her boots and uh, gloves, along with most of the members of the Conservation Commission, so it was, it was a good day. So I want to make note of it and thank them all for helping out. Thank you. Anything else? No, I have a couple of items. Um, I, as I mentioned before, um, Councillor Paul McKinney is serving his um, active duty ser military service at Fort Dix for the next few weeks. He will not be back until June 27th for anybody who is trying to get a hold of him for any reason. And we thank him for his service. Um, I also wanted to congratulate the graduating seniors from Cape Elizabeth High School who graduated yesterday. Um, and thank the Parks Division of Public Works and um, Police who assisted in the graduating, um, the graduation ceremonies and work as well as the school department, of course, who uh, put on a wonderful ceremony for the kids. Um, I want to take this opportunity also to thank Bob Lyman, who has been our acting superintendent for the past year. I want to thank him for his service to Cape Elizabeth. Um, I think he's been um, a great addition to the town and he will be leaving us in a couple of weeks. And um, we also want to welcome Alan Hawkins, who is the incoming superintendent, and welcome him to Cape Elizabeth. I'm sure he'll do a great job, but we will miss Bob Lyman, who's um, been particularly um, expert on the building project. Um, so those are my things. I think we will move on to the town manager's report. Yeah, thank you, Ann. I have a little longer report than usual. Uh, what I tried to do was to make a list of some of the different activities that had gone on some of the, during the last month. What's interesting about the last month, for those of us that choose to remember it, it was very wet. Uh, very wet, very miserable, but yet uh, even with that, uh, an awful lot got done. And I just want to quickly go through some of the things on this list of just a sense of what has been going on. Uh, the Memorial Day Parade, most of the council has participated in, thanks to Jim Cox for working on that. Uh, we had a Coast Guard retirement ceremony at the uh, Lighthouse on Saturday. Uh, Dick Tinsman, a former council chairman, retired after 30 years, the United States Coast Guard. Uh, we've hosted dozens of school groups from all over creation at Fort Williams Park. The Portland Headlight Tower project's done. The Keeper's Quarters has been painted. Uh, the museum at Portland Headlight gift shop and the museum itself is now open for the season. The cliff walk extension is just beautiful, extending out toward Delano Park from the lighthouse. Uh, we had students from uh, now graduates at Cape Elizabeth High School who helped us uh, doing some re-landscaping, cleaning the different bunkers at Fort Williams. We have new back stairs both inside and for egress, in, uh, inside for egress as well as outside at the Family Crisis Shelter. Uh, project that was done uh, by an outside contracting firm as well as our uh, Ernie's crew in the facilities department. We've been hosting little league games, lacrosse games, baseball games, softball fields, getting all those fields ready. Uh, the, the new bridge was dedicated going over the Spurling River. A number of councillors uh, were there with the Conservation Commission. Trails Day was mentioned, the first meeting of the Comp Plan Committee, the Spurling Church Committee. There was an informal meeting with the Portland Charitable Foundation, the Conservation Commission held a forum on Winnick Wills. Uh, Maureen was in large part responsible for the governor signing a bill clarifying cluster development, one that uh, got taken out of the ashes and somehow eventually got approved, uh, thanks to Maureen and Mary Ann as well. Mary Ann was very helpful working with the uh, Legislative Policy Committee in neutralizing the formidable opposition of the Maine Municipal Association. Uh, the police department had a seatbelt enforcement program. Some folks, unfortunately, found out about that. Uh, <laughs> we also moved the police radio antenna to the new Bowery Beach uh, Road cell tower, something that the council had spent an awful lot of time on earlier in the year. The recycling committee, working with Public Works at a hazardous waste collection day. The Fort Williams uh, Advisory Commission completed uh, some fee work that the council had asked to have done. That'll be on a future council agenda. Uh, we now have notebooks with Fort Williams Park key documents. We had the closings on both the South Street lot and the Mitchell Road lot. The land acquisition fund now has $206,000 in it compared to zero uh, a month ago. Uh, the 2004 town report was printed. There's a couple of policies and ordinances on tonight's agenda that moved along. The library trustees held a very nice reception for the family uh, of some major donors. As Mike Moles mentioned, the Family Fund Day 
committee uh, has been actively planning for the 18th. The cemetery trustees looked at a number of policies, and the cemetery, uh, thanks to Public Works, was ready for Memorial Day in the summer. The council held a workshop on employee retirement options. Uh, there were 24 children's story times at the Thomas Memorial Library. Uh, there were two different sets of art exhibits at the library. The surveying began for the sewer rehab project. The Public Works team meant, uh, won the Cumberland County uh, Snowplow Rodeo and participated in the state rodeo. Uh, there were emergency culvert repairs on Spur and Avenue, new refuse disposal permits started to be issued. The rear of the town hall was finally resided. Uh, exterior building repairs are still underway at the library. The new humidity control unit was finally installed at the library. The pool uh, was cleaned and is now filled again with water and we're waiting for it to heat up for the pool to open uh, again on the 20th. The fire department received a grant for a fire prevention dollhouse with matching funds from the Cape Elizabeth Education Foundation. They also undertook a practice burn of a Pilot Point Roadhouse. They held an annual recognition dinner for fire and rescue volunteers. Joe Mokri of the WET team was the volunteer of the year. The annual dog licenses was completed, a joint effort of uh, the town clerk, the office staff, the animal control officer with South Portland uh, in the Cape Elizabeth Police Department. We have started working with uh, Jason Lund, uh, updating uh, from the school uh, School Technology Department updating CETB equipment. Uh, work has begun on the statewide voter registration list. As Mary Ann mentioned, the school building committee met. Uh, Matt Sturgis was asked to present to all of the staff of our accounting firm, auditing firm, on the impact of LD1, helping to, you know, what they'll be looking at when they do individual audits. Uh, went over to their office. Community Services registered 810 students for all the different summer programs. There were over 1,100 motor vehicles registered, uh, rapid renewal, 90 hunting and fishing licenses, almost 300 boats and ATVs. We continue to reduce uh, the amount that's owed for property tax now, about 120,000? 105,000, keeps coming in. Uh, collected a whole bunch of revenue, and you know, I could go on and on, but I think it, what this list really shows is an awful lot can be accomplished in a month. And then secondly, that it really involves a lot of participation by citizen volunteers working on different committees with the council and with the staff. And it just, uh, you know, I think it was good. It all happened despite really bad weather. And as a result, uh, you know, I think a whole lot was accomplished. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to go on it. Not my usual oh, that was That was very informative. Council Moles, did you have a comment? Did I mention this Saturday is Family Fun Day? You did. <laughs> <laughs> Any other comments or questions for the manager? <coughs> moving on. And I'm going to keep the, mo the, the meeting moving right along because it's hot in this room and I know everyone in the audience as well as everyone up here uh, would like to go home to their almost equally hot homes probably, but at least they can put on their shorts at home. So um, It is now time for the citizens' discussion of items not on the agenda. We have two periods during every council meeting, one at the beginning of the agenda and one at the end when any citizen who would like to speak on any issue that is not on the agenda may come forward. Um, if there's anyone who would like to speak, please come forward to the podium. I see no one rising, so we will move on. Uh, the first item on our regular agenda tonight is item 181-0405 has to do with the BA wetlands amendment, amendment. Um, we have scheduled a public hearing, and then after that, we will possibly take action on that item. So um, I will declare this public hearing open. If there is anyone who would like to speak on this item, um, they can please come forward. Although perhaps we should have a very brief uh, mention of what this item is um, for the public who might be watching on TV. Um, Jack. Is Jack Roberts is our ordinance committee chair. Would you like to introduce this, Jack? Uh, David, do you want to recuse yourself now or after I read it? Um, I might as well do it now. Um, I have recused myself at each step of the consideration of this matter and uh, would like to recuse myself once again. So I will move that Councillor Jacker be recused from this item. Is there a second? It's been moved and seconded. Um, all in favor? Four against one. Um, and so 
So, Councillor Backer, if you would I like to step, step down. down to the audience. While David's stepping down, I'd like to thank uh, our council chair for once again filling one of the, uh, the chairs of our different committees to, in David's place. The uh, BA Wetlands Amendment, the Ordinance Committee met on April 1st to review a proposed change to the zoning ordinance that would provide an opportunity for wetland setbacks to be reduced from 250 feet to 100 feet for properties in the BA district. By a vote of two to one, Robert, the ordinance Robert's been against. The Ordinance Committee is recommending this amendment to the Town Council's consideration. The deciding factor for those in favor of the amendment was the perceived environmental benefit gained by encouraging businesses to discontinue use of septic systems often located adjacent to the wetlands in favor of connecting to public sewer, which would be required in order to apply the 100-foot setback. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I do declare, with that brief introduction, I mean, we'll have the opportunity for more discussion, but it is now time for the public hearing. The public hearing is open. If there's anyone who would like to speak, please come forward to the podium, state your name and address, and we will hear what you have to say. Thank you. Hi. My name is Mary Page. I live at 172 Slice Road in Cape Elizabeth. I own the property with my husband at 517 Ocean House Road in Cape Elizabeth, which is Two Lights General Store, which is what this wetland is abutting. Um, we are looking just to clean up the property. We are looking to clean up debris that people have proceeded to throw in here, throw in this area for about the last 30 years. Um, we have things from sofas to chairs to stoves to bricks to everything that is in this area that we can't get to unless we cut it down and clean it up and keep it and maintain it to be clean. This is our business. This is our livelihood. It reflects us. We want it to be a neat, clean area. Um, this was only discovered about a year ago that this was an RP1 wetland. So that's where, in turn, the problem started. Um, we're just looking to have the same consideration for the business that the other businesses have had for 30 years in this area. Um, we don't plan on building anything. We're not extending the business. We're not doing anything like that. We just want to clean it up, take the trees down that are choked with sumac, before they fall on our building and maintain the look. That's basically all we want to do to it. Um, by changing this, it would allow us to, again, make the look of our business enhance the area instead of looking like it does in this, in this one area, which is probably about uh, 100 by 40 feet, is as big as this area is. And I do have some pictures if you'd like to see um, trees, the debris, and what we have to do to get to it to clean it up. Okay. Thank you very much, Ms. Page. Um, if you want to hand the pictures up to Councillor Roberts, we'll pass them along and then we'll make sure they get back to you. Any questions? Are there any... Oh, um, you know, this, it, are there any factual questions for Ms. Page at this point? Or we can hold them for discussion and ask you back up. Is there anybody? Thank you very much. Is there anybody else who would like to speak at the public hearing? Thank you. Good evening. My name is Gail Schneider. I live at 511 Ocean House Road. I'm in a butter to the Two Lights General Store. And I would just ask you to consider this wetlands ordinance very, very carefully before you change it or under your consideration in possibly changing it. Um, we, do we really want to change the precious wetlands ordinance so that a property owner can clean up the property or put a fence around for trash barrels? Could we not, I'm not sure of the process, could we not just give a variance um, so that she can do what she wants to do in order to clean up the property? Um, if the septic system is in fact a threat to the wetlands, do we need to change the wetlands ordinance in order to ask this property owner to connect to the sewer? 
I would ask you to consider these points very carefully. What you're considering is a very big change to the land in Cape Elizabeth. We'll never have a chance again to um, preserve it. Um, so I just ask you very carefully to consider what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you, Mitch Mavis. Is there anyone else who would like to speak on this item? Yes, sir. <laughs> Good evening. Uh, my name is Carl Best. I'm a resident at 12 Pondview Road. Um, I just had a couple comments. I, I wanted to um, also uh, you know, voice my opinion in terms of um, you know, many residents, myself included, and my family would like to see things unchanged. Um, I realize that there is a, a definite uh, need in some parts of the wetlands for cleanup, and I would hope that some provisions can be made to do that. But my concerns are a little more far-reaching than that. Um, I just want to remind everyone here, especially those who uh, may be residents that are nearby the wetlands as we are, that uh, it does offer uh, a lot of character, uh, a lot of beauty and charm. Uh, to, to this town that makes it a desirable place in which to live, which is, of course, one of the reasons why, why we picked that area. I would also like to just echo the sentiments of the Conservation Committee who recommended against any changes to the ordinance uh, and remind everyone involved that we are, in fact, setting precedent for future projects, developments, and uh, I think we need to, to look very hard at, at you know, the doors we're opening here. Um, I would hope that the uh, conference Comprehensive Planning Board could uh, really take the time to uh, study and focus on any short and long-term impact that uh, any ordinance changes will have down the road. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Is there anyone else who would like to speak? I see no one, so I declare this public hearing closed. Thank you very much for your comments and input. Um, now we will actually deal with the item itself. Um, is there a motion? Because I would make motion. I'd like to move that item 181-04-05, a proposal to reduce the 250 foot setback to 100 feet in the VA zone, uh, have its passage. I'm going to preface that way to start. So you're moving to, to adopt this? Correct. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second it. Okay. Discussion? Councilor Roberts. So now I'm going to speak against it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Put one hat stick, but I can take, you know, take one on, on the other, et cetera. Many of you may know that I'm not real fond of our 250-foot setback ordinance. Not because I am opposed to wetland regulations, but no one has ever been able to adequately explain to me why 250 feet is important. That's the first one. Number two, there is no provision to allow for mitigating any damage. So a person could mitigate it, can't do anything in that area. And number three, there is absolutely no right of appeal in this ordinance. That is totally unheard of in any of our other ordinances that we have. However, we have a history in this community of protecting our wetlands. And at present, we have no studies or other data to document which is, which is the best way for the adjacent wetlands to be protected. We do know that existing businesses could hook up to the sewer tomorrow if there were a problem with their septic tank. We don't know how many additional businesses and parking lots can be created with this rollback of the buffer. Show me the data that says this is that this amendment would be in the best interest of the surrounding wetlands, and I would support it. But if it's just a means to expand a business district at the cost of the environment, I can't. If we, uh, and my uh, final point, if we were to reduce the setback in the business zone, why are we not going to do it in the residential zones as well? So for all of those reasons, I cannot support reducing the buffer from 250 feet to 100 feet at this time. Thank you very much, Councillor Roberts. Um, is there anyone? I'm sorry, <laughs> I feel like I've got tennis neck here. Um, Councillor Fritz. 
Um, I, I would agree with Councilor Roberts. I, I do not favor passage of this um, uh, weakening of our wetlands ordinance. Um, we got another, we got an email today uh, from uh, Dan Chase who was opposed, and I think he brought out two very important points. Um, Septa, you know, connecting to the sewer, as, as Councilor Roberts said, could be done tomorrow. We don't have to change the wetlands ordinance for that, so I disagree with that reason. But it also would not solve many of the problems that uh, reducing the buffer to the wetlands, um, particularly if we have additional development that takes place. And actually, there is a proposal, I think, before the planning board and kind of a partner in, um, in, in this. Um, there are other pollution problems with additional development that's near a wetland. Uh, runoff from parking lot, uh, actually reducing the amount. But the most important thing about wetlands protection, to me, is not just wildlife and open space, which I favor, but is to absorb the flooding, uh, uh, the water that uh, happens when we have flood. We certainly saw that in the last two months here. Our wetlands are terribly important for absorbing that moisture that we have and then um, evaporating without causing problems. Um, I'm also very much concerned about the precedent study. Uh, if there's no reason to me to allow a business zone to have a, a lesser setback from wetlands than residential zones. We went through extremely careful study when we set up this wetlands ordinance. I think it took us about five years to get it in place. It's scientifically based, it's on soil types, it's on plant life. Um, and if the map doesn't exactly match what's on the ground, then an applicant for development can always come to the planning board and say, this is not what actually exists on the ground and prove it by fact that the plant life and the soil types don't actually exist as, as we have them on the map. Um, so those are my main issues. Okay. Thank you very much. Councilor Lynch. Um, does Maureen have a map of the area available? <laughs> I would say yes from what she's got in her hand. Can I ask that she be allowed to? Certainly. And the reason is, I just have a couple of comments to make. Um, this is not a very big change to our ordinance, nor is it a significant, or even in my view, an insignificant threat to the environment. Um, this is a very tiny area of town, and I just want to make sure that the, the record is clear on that. As I understand it, first of all, this ordinance only applies to the BA district, which um, for people at home runs generally from uh, Gil Jordan's lawn care center north along 77 to the Two Lights General Road. It also captures on the easterly side the Lions Club and I think that um, little antique shop so that you have um, the Gil Jordan store, um, the Lions Club, the antique store, a little sliver in front of the good table, and then the Two Lights General store. And Maureen, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that generally is the BA district. So I, I just want to be clear, this is not a large portion of town, it's a very, very tiny portion of town. Um, second, this change would not apply if the wetland is rated either moderate or high value for wildlife. It, it, you cannot then have a 100 foot setback. So if you have a wetland with moderate or high value for um, wildlife, this change would not apply. So we're basically talking about a fairly low value wetland 
Um, lastly, as was mentioned, um, this would only apply where there's sewer availability. And while um, I, I find some attraction to the argument about having different rules for residents and, and um, businesses, I think with respect to sewer, it makes sense to get our businesses, which have a much higher volume of sewer usage going on the sewer and off of a private septic system. I mean, this in this particular case, it's a restaurant, and it will have a much higher uh, volume of waste than uh, a homeowner. So um, I would support it. I'm a little concerned about having a vote on it tonight, however, with Councillor McKenney gone. Um, as I think all of you know, um, it, we need four votes to change an ordinance. Councillor Backers had to recuse himself, and it strikes me that um, it might be appropriate. I'm not making the motion because I think others may want to speak, but I think it might be appropriate and considerate of Councillor McKenney's duties to his country that we table this until he returns so that this issue is not um, decided one way or another for lack of a vote when a councillor is in fact serving our nation. So um, that's my view on it. And in light of the heat, I'll stop there. Okay. Councillor Moll. I would like to ditto everything that Councillor Lynch just said. Again, it is a very small area of town. Uh, our ordinance in that particular area far exceeds the state standard. There's no need for us to far exceed the state standard. We protect the other wetlands in town just fine. Uh, I am going to make a motion to table this uh, in deference to Councillor McKinney being out. Before I make that motion, uh, would Madam Chairman like to say anything? I have a question, just a procedural question, and the manager's <laughs> way in the and back. He's almost out the door. And before you ask the question, I'd also say, I, I, and you all looked at the photo too, and it is a mess. I have to say I have a lot of sympathy for a responsible business owner coming in and saying they want to do something to um, enhance their business and clean up what looks like may have been a casual dumping ground. So I, I think the business owner, uh, Mary Page, is here for all the right reasons in this case, and I just wanted to add that. I would ditto that again, and I walked the site, and the, <laughs> the site is fairly high, and then it drops in just before the wetland. Coming out 250 feet, the water's never going to go 250 feet because of the change in, in elevation there. This, this is not an area where we need the expansive wetland to absorb water runoff. It's not that situation. Okay. Thank you. Um, before we go on, I know you haven't made a, uh, a motion to table, but procedurally, don't we have to deal with the previous motion before we can then? No. Okay, motion. so motion to table. It's a power motion. Okay. Well, um, I'm, I'm not sure if Councillor Mould is going to definitely make a motion to table or not. Um, I was filling in for um, Councillor Backer on this one who had a conflict, uh, filling in at the ordinance committee meeting um, because he had a conflict. Um, I am not going to support it at this point because uh, I've been, yeah, I'm somewhat on the fence on this, but I've been somewhat persuaded by um, the arguments that uh, Mr. Chase, Dan Chase made in his um, email to us. Um, however, um, I would prefer, I think, to have it dealt with when Councillor McKinney is here since he was on record in the Ordinance Committee as being a supporter of this and I feel sort of bad about just because he's off serving us and his nation, you know, not being able to deal with it. So I can see there's not going to be four votes even if I were to support it. So um, that's what my comment is. So. I, don't know. I would second the motion to table at this point. Motion to table. Okay. There's been a motion to table and a seconding of a motion to table. So there's no further discussion allowable on this item. So we'll deal with the tabling motion. All those in favor of tabling this, was it until a certain time? Until next month. Till the, till the regular council meeting next month. All those in favor of the tabling, um, raise your hand. 
Can you discuss on that on a, after the motion? Reason for not? I'm sorry? Is, is discussion allowed at this point? Is the uh, I, once there is a motion no. for tabling, there, there's no further discussion. Okay, it wasn't on the merits of the proposal. All right, fine. I'm sorry, I thought we were done with it, and I think Councilor Moles thought that um, well, we were done with the regular discussion since everyone I thought expressed so. their opinion. Yes, that's why I, I don't think his intent was to cut off discussion. No, I, in fact, I asked you to make a few comments before I, I tabled. I, I'm tabling because uh, well, Councilor McKinney is not here. That's, my, my, that's in my motion to table until he comes back next month. Okay, I think we have to move the tabling motion at this point procedurally. So all in favor of the tabling motion, raise your hand. Three, again, two. So um, the motion to table it till next month passes, um, three to two. So we'll be seeing it again next month and uh, we'll get a chance to discuss it again. Thank you very much. I want to thank the people who came out to speak at the public hearing. Um, and um, Ms. Page, your photos are up here. I don't know she, where she is. But. Okay, we can get them back to her. Okay, thank you. Um, next is item number 180205. Stormwater ordinance. There's a public hearing and possible action. Just as an introduction, I'll ask our ordinance chair um, if he would like to introduce this. Thank you, Madam Councilor Chair. Councilor Roberts. Yes, um, maybe Bob can refresh my memory, but I believe it was close to three years ago that he and I and uh, Councilor McGinty, McGinty, the manager, and I'm not sure, perhaps another councilor, went to a meeting in Portland when they were starting to address this issue that we had to have a stormwater ordinance in place. And uh, Bob and Maureen and a number of other people worked on it for months on end, tweaking this thing. Then the council worked on it for months on end with the ordinance committee. And here we have it in front of us. So the ordinance committee is recommending that the attached revisions to the stormwater section of the conservation ordinance chapter 18, the bulk of the revision is proposed to come in compliance with the new state and federal stormwater regulations. This review of the stormwater regulation will presented an opportunity to update regulations to reflect current practice. Public Works Director Bob Malley and Town Engineer Steve Harding reviewed the ordinance and recommended changes to some dated sections. And Bob has to submit an annual report in June, and as part of that to show our progress, he would like to have the adoption of this ordinance in his, in his report. So with that, having stated that, I would recommend the adoption of our new stormwater ordinance. Okay, thank you for that introduction. We will now have the public hearing before we go on to, to hold that motion um, just for a moment. <laughs> so, um, okay, I will declare the public hearing on this storm, proposed stormwater ordinance open. If there's anyone who would like to speak on it, please come forward. Seeing no one, I declare the public hearing closed. And now, Councilor Roberts, did you want to make that in the form of a motion? Okay. The, uh, does Bob want to speak uh, at all? Uh, all right. Bob I'll, Malley, our Public I'll Works public Director. Public speak, and then I'll uh, make the actual motion. Thank you. Opening, uh, just to clarify, Jack, and add is that if part of the stormwater management plan that you adopted back in September 2004, uh, this is a component of that. So it's, it's, we're, we're complying with the, the Clean Water Act and, uh, and it basically is an enforcement ordinance that gives us the right to, to regulate non-stormwater discharges to our system and allows us to take enforcement action if we find uh, instances where the illicit connections such as washing machines and what have you have found some of the last within the last year. But I also want to take the time to thank Maureen O'Meara, uh, Town Planner, for drafting this and putting this ordinance together. She was a great help to me uh, in the, doing the word processing on it. So just, I, I do want to thank Maureen for her help. She was very instrumental in putting it together. So. Great, thank you. Thank you to both the town planner and our public works director for their work on this effort. I would move for passage of item number 182-0405. Uh, known as the stormwater ordinance and the revisions herein. Second. 
It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Councilor Roberts. Just one brief, we, while we're presenting around all the thanks, I would particularly like to thank uh, Councilor Backer, who, yes. as usual, has stepped up to the plate and done a, a ton of wordsmithing to make sure that this would fit in nicely with everything else we have. So thank you, David. Thank you. Welcome. Any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll move the question. All those in favor of um, adopting these proposed amendments? Five, opposed? One, okay, thank you. So we will move on um, to item number 1830405. The next three items, 183, 184, and 185. Oh, and 186, sorry. <laughs> the next four items have to do with RWS, which I guess now has a new name, Eco Maine. And I will ask Councillor Fritz, who is our representative, uh, Council representative uh, for RWS, uh, to introduce these items, please. For, or at least item number 183, and then we'll go on. Um, basically, regional waste system is uh, all the, the agreements that we have with them uh, are set to expire in 2014. Um, it seems like a fair distance away, but it, it can hamper uh, us from borrowing money, making our agreements for the less and actually taking it away uh, at this point that we would have to be um, RWS would be dissolved. So we have been working on reorganization and um, the, the first item uh, is for the interlocal solid waste agreement. Um, and basically it just sets up the nonprofit uh, agreement between the town and regional waste system. Um, talks about capable of participating as a member, how we allocate, how RWS, I'll, I'll call it RWS for an awful long time, so please excuse me, <laughs> um, the name change takes a while, um, but how uh, regional waste system will allocate the cost to the town based on the volume of trash that we send there um, and various um, other uh, component. And if, if you have any um, questions that I'm not able to answer tonight, uh, we have Russell. I uh, um, <laughs> uh, hear who's our finance director at Regional Waste Systems who has been with the organization for many years and um, might be able to answer any details that you might have. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Fritz. Um, would you like to make a motion? Uh, I would like to move that the town council approve the town entering into and adopting the successor organization to RWS, which is Eco Maine and, and its Eco Maine interlocal solid waste agreement. So this would be item 184 that you're making the motion for? Correct. Okay. 183. I'm sorry. <laughs> I keep wanting to skip 183. I'm sorry. 183. Um, is there a second? I'll second that. And moved and seconded. Is there discussion or questions or anything? Councilor Lynch. Um, I'll be voting against this tonight because I have more questions than I can even ask in this meeting. Um, I'm concerned that we, this is a very fundamental change. We're restructuring um, RWS and I think that we need to be asking ourselves and particularly when I hear, well, we may need to borrow more money, and this is one of the reasons we're doing it, I think we need to ask ourselves what are Cape Elizabeth solid waste alternatives after 2014. It's not that far away. Um, what will be the cost to Cape Elizabeth of these, this restructuring? I, and, and maybe the, maybe the town manager has um, a ringing endorsement tonight, in which case I perhaps could be um, convinced, but I, Personally, having read this package, feel an absence of substantive information about the long-term costs and implications to Cape Elizabeth. And it 
may be that it's all really a good idea. I just can't bring myself to vote for this tonight because I don't know that it's a good idea and a good deal for the citizens of Cape Elizabeth. And I would like to see us have a workshop on this to understand better the implications. So that's my concern. Thank you. Um, any other comments? Councillor Mole? Get out. Okay. Any other comments? Yes. Councillor Backer? Councillor Lynch expressed very well. I have no reason to vote against any of these matters related to uh, regional waste or whatever our new name is. Eco. Eco. Eco Mania. <laughs> Um, but I read this through in the packet, and it didn't mean a thing to me. Um, I have no idea what I'm really being asked to approve and what the, or I guess I should say, what the consequences is, consequences are, um, to Cape Elizabeth of approving these items. Um, I feel like I need more information, because I sense that these have the potential to have fairly substantial ramifications long term, and I don't understand what those are. Okay, thank you. Any comments from this part of the day? Yes, Councilor Roberts? It's, it's clear that people would like to have a workshop with it, and I'm prepared to vote, but I'd have no problem going to a workshop with it, many people wanting to do so. Okay, I, I have a question for um, the manager. Can you, um, and then a question for Councillor Fritz. Um, Mr. McGovern, can you tell us, do you have any recommendations on any of these items? Or do you, firstly, do you have any concerns on any of these items? Uh, thank you, Ann. I, I, you know, I can't give it a ringing endorsement, uh, but, but I can give it, but I'm happy to endorse it. Uh, back in 1974, uh, a number of brave individuals decided that they would try to do something regionally. Uh, there were a lot of communities that were initially involved, seven or eight. It ended up, uh, there were, I always thought there were four, but according to the statement, we must have come in a month or two later. Uh, there were three founding communities and then Cape Elizabeth as well. Uh, that was part of what we know, the old RWS, the Baylor. They went through a tremendous process uh, trying to close out the old dumps, uh, burning dumps at that point, uh, coming up with a new system in Cape of transfer stations. And in uh, 1978, uh, the town closed its transfer station, excuse me, closed its open burning dump and started using regional waste systems. Uh, the Baylor uh, worked for well for a number of years, but it had a number of issues getting older. It had also issues of uh, lots of growth in the disposal stream uh, and uh, particularly issues with the, the long-term disposal of the bales themselves is very expensive space. It was uh, a major study undertaken uh, by regional waste systems at that time, by the communities of regional waste systems, to go into what was first known as RWS-2. It was about the time Rocco had been the finance director of South Portland, but that's, uh, around that time he came into regional waste systems as their finance director. And anyway, uh, the decision was made to build the uh, RWS plant that's now out there on uh, Blueberry Road, uh, it's had its problems, uh, but the, the good things it has done is that Cape Elizabeth really hasn't had to worry about where it's going to put its trash for now over, uh, for now over 30 years. Uh, there was never a fear that the private sector entity was going to go out of business, as you know we fear from time to time uh, with various private sector entities. You know they get an adverse court decision, they get uh, whatever they get, and there's a real fear that. You know, they, they might not be around for the long term. You know, Merck has gone through uh, many different incarnations, threats from Bedford and Saco to close. Uh, there's talk about pine tree waste or whatever it's called, doing something in Westford, but I haven't seen them. I don't think they've broken ground yet. Uh, you know, that's gone on and on. So, you know, regional waste get into a situation uh, with a lot of debt because a lot of environmental issues, a lot of other problems. I, you know, I haven't been a fan of the management, the prior management, nothing so against Rocco, of RWS. <coughs> but, you know, I think the board in the last year has really begun to get a handle of the situation. They hired an outfit to come in to do a strategic plan. 
uh, and this is a uh, follow through in that strategic plan. It's, it's in, in essence recommending what those consultants suggested. I didn't agree with everything those consultants suggested, but again, regionally, there are, there are some uh, aspects of it that you know you can't agree with. When, when you go regional, you give up uh, certain aspects. In uh, the, the real issue it comes down to, as I think Carol touched on, is that there was, a, I think, a really good decision made a year ago to bite the bullet and to pay off all the existing debt uh, between now and uh, the original date, 2014. There's, there's a lot of debt. We're paying a very high bill now to get rid of it. Uh, and it, it really comes down to a, de a decision point by the different communities of which way do you want to go. And some that aren't here in the core of Greater Portland, you know, may have the, may want to go to Rochester, may want to go to Old Town, may want to go to some of these other places. Uh, transportation, as we can see, is very expensive. Uh, and also, in all those different venues, there's always the possibility they, they might not exactly happen. Uh, regional waste, uh, anyway, agreed to do that. We're paying for that now. But then there's the issue of, you know, we own, along with the other communities, a tremendous asset in uh, the, the remaining uh, life on the uh, smokestack, on all those boilers. But yet, they're going to need to continue to invest in them. Some of that investment is going to have to go out beyond 2014 to be repaid. You know, by agreeing to get out 2014, there's no buyout that they would pay us for our share of, of the asset that's there, and we would be losing millions of dollars of assets uh, if we don't continue our ownership right. Uh, you know, we, I, I think as David and Mary Ann said, we, we never do really know in the end, what's this going to cost us? We don't know all of the debt that might be incurred in order to keep that plan to deal with the mercury issue that you know we've read about in the paper is is very real. But we, we do now we do know that this is a regional solution, and that the region itself, as the, the last 30 years, will come together to to solve the problems that might be expensive, but in the end. No one, you know, as we've seen, no one can ultimately tell us, you know, we're leaving town. We're not doing this anymore. Uh, there's always that danger if we do a private sector alternative, not RWS, Eco Maine. I think the other really significant thing that RWS has done this past year is I think they made a very excellent decision not to open their own Asheville. Uh, that was uh, quite a, a to develop a totally new one. Uh, they agreed to go with the state plan up in uh, Old Town. Uh, I, they've saved a lot of money doing that. They also have examined all of their transportation, uh, different aspects, the operations. Uh, Higgins uh, had a contract there that uh, wasn't really the best, I think, for everyone. And you know, my read of it is is that you know they they've made a lot of good decisions. This plan and this successor item. Uh, really, I think important is in that it, it develops a board that's much smaller than the other board, that, that's forced to pay attention, that's forced to be responsible, and uh, I think it's good. Well, that may have sounded like a ringing endorsement. It's still, I can understand that the concern that there is, uh, because we don't know in the long term. But in the end, you know, like so many things we do, you do take a little bit of a risk, and I would much rather put my eggs in the basket of continued regional cooperation and ownership where you don't have an entity that just says, sorry, Cape Elizabeth, see you later, and we end up, you know, looking for a, an, a, an alternative beyond our wildest imagination of expense as to uh, how we get rid of our trash. Uh, this has been a good solution for us, working with our neighbors since 1974, and, uh, you know, this will get us beyond the 40-year period. Uh, uh, in fact, and you know, it's really the beginning of the 40-year period. And I, I just think it's a, it's amazing. It's an amazing record uh, due to the uh, the wisdom of Dick Jordan and uh, Billy Jordan and some of the others who were on the council uh, at Whitcomb and others who were on the council in uh, 1974. Thank you very much. Um, and I had a question for Councillor Fritz, which was, um, I've heard three councillors um, say they're interested in having a workshop on this. I'd like to know, what is the time sensitivity of these items? Are there any deadlines? Uh, because I'm thinking only because we are not having a workshop two, two nights from tonight. Our July workshop is going to be 
a busy workshop. I don't think we want to have a, it's with, about the Fort Williams Charitable Foundation meeting, and I don't think we want to have another item on that night, especially one that is as complex as regional waste or eco, or whatever it is now, um, so, which would mean that we'd have to have our workshop in August on it. And so if we wait until then, are we missing any deadlines or time sensitivity on any of these items? I mean, where the towns are all in the process of, of, of you know, considering this, these agreements. So um, they aren't all in yet. Um, we will have our annual meeting and be electing a new board. Um, I'm already the representative from the town. It would be good to have that approval, I think. Maybe Rafa might want to um, say something about that timing. Could, could you mention the, the uh, annual meeting? When is the annual meeting? The annual meeting is June. The, the, June, okay. I don't need the specific date. Just, you know. This Thursday. Yeah. This Thursday, okay, great. Uh, well, I, I don't think that kind of time frame would be a problem. Uh, okay. Some communities have already adopted everything. Some haven't even started to, to discuss it. Uh, there is no real deadline it, it, in, in terms of next month or the following month. Uh, so I, a workshop in August, uh, I think, would be fine. Okay. I wish Thank I you. Had, you know, been Thank aware you. because I could have pushed that you know that, that you did want a workshop that we could have had it uh, this Wednesday instead of canceling out one. But okay. um, but the annual meeting will be um, approving the board and yes, the officers the and the executive committee and I'm slated to go on to the executive committee so that might be um, <coughs> an item that you might be willing to the, the bylaws have been changed by the board and that's where the, the makeup of the board <coughs> the executive committee the voting percentages are all in the bylaws that has been passed and will go into effect July 1. Okay. Are there any questions for Mr. Marzelli while he is at the podium? I, I if, if you are going to have a workshop, um, if, you, if you have certain concerns or specific questions, let us know uh, ahead of time and we'll try to have the answers for you. Great. Thank you very much, sir. You're welcome. Okay, we do have a motion before us on item num number 183 um, to uh, recommend that the town enter into and adopt the success successor organization Eco Maine's solid waste agreement. Um, so I, I'm sensing that the, the I, council really was, wants to have a workshop before voting on this. I could withdraw my motion. Unless I see any change of heart down at this side, still everybody's still hoping for a workshop over here. Okay, then. And move, move that we send it to workshop. Okay. Both, both the uh, inter uh, interlocal solid waste agreement and, and the solid waste handling agreement. Okay. Uh, so and that would be the August. Next. So you're with, withdraw you're, my, you're with, withdraw my second first before we move on to that one. Right. So you're withdrawing your first motion, and Council Roberts is withdrawing his second for that. And now you want to make a motion, Council Fritz, to deal with this whole issue, which would be really. Except that we do not have an August workshop. I believe I mean, we. We were just do. going to have one in either July or August, and you decided to have it in July. Uh huh. So we're make, June, so. you can read can I make a recommendation? Since there is nothing pressing about the Fort Williams matter in terms of time, um, if we did put that off till September, we could do this in July. And it seems to me this is more pressing as a time matter than the Fort Williams issue. What say you, counselors? We're sort of in general discussion here, so we're, we're not making a decision. Is there support for that idea or or su more support for scheduling an August workshop? I'd support July. You'd support doing 
Sorry, the RWS stuff in July. Ditto. <laughs> this is like the ditto side yeah, over here ditto. tonight. Hi. I understand. Council Backer, what's your thought? Well, my only concern is whether the Fort Williams Advisory, the Fort Williams Foundation, um, will see that as sending a message that I don't want to send them to move them back a couple of months. Um, although I'm, it doesn't sound like there's a deadline with the regional waste system issue. So given your druthers, you prefer I, an I, August I, workshop? I, I'd prefer to go forward with the Fort Williams uh, in July in July and schedule the regional waste systems for whenever the first available date is after that, okay. which may be September. Okay. Council Mould? Could we ask Fort Williams Foundation to come in either just prior to the start of the meeting or have a meeting with them just after the July meeting so that we can actually... You mean on a different date? On the night of the council meeting in July. As opposed to doing them at the workshop, the stated workshop night, we could still do, it was awful nice of uh, Mr. Manzoli to come down here tonight and step into that effort. I'd like to handle this issue quickly. Uh, so in, in essence, have two workshops in July, yeah. two dates that are have workshops in July. One of them would be the same night as the council night. Okay. And I, I, on the reg I would suggest if you want to do that, you do the regional waste the same night as the council night. Because the Fort Williams, the, we don't know how that might evolve. And regional waste, I, you know, I'd really appreciate it. I, I hear there's lots of issues and questions, but I haven't heard any of them. Mm -hmm. uh, so it'd be really nice, you know, as, as Rocco said, if, if there are issues that we could get them, you know, a week or so before the meeting so that we can make sure we, we get the responses from the different attorneys and other folks who uh, might be able to answer the question. I would, uh, I'll get to you in just a second, Jack. I would prefer to um, keep the Fort Williams meeting on the night that it's been scheduled because we've already asked the foundation to put aside that night and we've already asked the advisory commission members to put aside that night and um, I, I just think they're counting on that night and they were hoping for June and because of Councilor McKenney not being here during June we wanted to have I wanted to have ev all the counselors available for that meeting, and so I would hate to put them off another month. I, not that I feel, feel there's any super sense of urgency on that issue, but I just hesitate since we've already scheduled it with them. If we are going to have a second uh, workshop in July, I would prefer to do the RWS slash eco one on the night of the council meeting. Hopefully it would be a light agenda and not a hot night, but um, Councilor Roberts. Yes, both yourself and Councilor Beck have pretty much summed it up, but we did make a commitment to meet with them in July, and I don't think we should be backing off from that at this point. Um, the IWS one, I hate to put it at the back of a council meeting not knowing how long a council meeting is going to be, because if it gets to be 10.30, 11 o'clock before we get to see them, I know my attention is, is waning fast, um, but maybe we could make that decision how, maybe we could ask Rocco a question. Rocco, how quickly can you s reschedule if we if to come after the ju July meeting if we know it's going to be a short one as opposed to a long one? I, I think we can do it that way. We can do it, make a change on short notice. Okay, so I would, if it's going to be a short meeting in July, then we could add uh, the RWS onto it. If it looks like it's going to be a lengthy meeting, then let's reschedule it. In July. The manager has... It's going to be a short yes. meeting unless you keep tabling everything to the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> and I haven't the, tabled anything. <laughs> the, 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 man, the manager also said he would prefer to have the workshop before the meeting rather than after the meeting. Yes, Councilor Backer. And just so we're clear, I don't have any specific questions on this, you know, to present. It's just that in reading through it, I was really left with a sense of not fully understanding what the entire packet was. And I hate to vote yay or nay on something, not understanding what I'm voting for or against. And I think, and that's simply the way I feel I'd be voting if I voted 
tonight. It may still be the way I feel I'm voting, even after a workshop. <laughs> but at least I'd like to have the opportunity for somebody to just walk me through what's here. And in response to Councilor Chris's comment that, well, you know, maybe if we had known ahead of time, maybe we could have gone ahead with the workshop this month. You know, with the timing of when we get these things, we get the packet the week before, maybe five or six days before the meeting, I often don't get a chance to look through the packet until the weekend. So, I mean, it was only in the last 48 hours I even had a chance to read this. Um, and not enough time to do anything with it other than digest it over the weekend and prepare for tonight's meeting. Okay. And I would just say, you know, they can get to work. I do have a couple of specific questions, but they're fairly simple. Uh, but I, I think if you were looking at a corporate reorganization, you would be asking these questions and you would not sign on to something without that. And so my questions are, what are capable of this reasonable solid waste alternatives beyond 2014? And then to the best of your ability, Michael, what are the costs to Cape Elizabeth of those reasonable alternatives by sticking with a re reincarnated RWS? Two questions, maybe not that simple, but I think that we need to at least, and we may not be able to answer them, in which case we have to rely on the history of RWS, but it seems to me we have to at least ask the question and see what the answers are before we vote for a reorganization that's going to commit to citizens to Cape Elizabeth. Okay. I'm going to uh, take the prerogative of the chair and try to move this along. Um, uh, there is a motion before us, I, I believe, from Councilor Fritz to, um, dis to defer discussion of this item. And is it just item 183 or 183? through 186, all four of those items, um, until a workshop. Okay, all four, of, until a workshop in July. Is that your motion? In July? But yeah, the night of the council meeting, um, whether it's before or after, we can figure out, but okay. That's the motion. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion? I hope not. Only discussion would be whether you want to have it before or after. Okay. Um, I'll just ask that as a question after we're done with the vote. Um, all in favor of uh, deferring this discussion until a, uh, a workshop to be held the night of the July council meeting. I'm, I'm sorry, I can't see Marion's arm. Sorry, one, two, three, six. Okay, it's unanimous. Now, can I, this is not a formal vote, but can I see? The manager, I'm going to ask just for a show of hands, the manager has recommended having the workshop before the council meeting? What, what, what I was thinking was trying to do a number of things to, to see if you have a, on your agenda that night the school issue, if we could try and schedule a brief tour uh, that evening so that everyone is seeing the same things, getting the same questions answered. The school, the, I'm sorry, the, the school, school issue? Transfer the money and oh, get the okay. in the high school project. Uh, this and what, what I was thinking is, you know, then maybe we could, you know, get a bite feed at a local establishment, uh, you know, make it a little bit social, not discussing business. Uh, okay. Get all the business done on one night. So you were hoping for before. Now we've yeah. got before or after. So who is interested in before? Okay. So we've got before. But my my concern is to not have too much um, on our plate, I guess, so that we get a thorough discussion so that we really can move forward with this. Um, there have been a number of workshops when, you know, my update is for RWS to keep, keep you informed. We're at the end of the workshop agendas and too tired to talk about them. So I feel like, you know, we're, I think we, we should pledge to ourselves that we will deal with it that night. I, I was thinking like 5 o'clock to begin with the tour of the school and then a, a bite to eat and then start regional waste around 6.30, give you a full hour. And it may well be that if you provide at least information on alternatives and costs, projected costs of RWS as well as costs of alternatives, we may not 
Do we need much of a workshop? Yes, I would encourage any counselors who have any questions, whether they're vague or specific, to forward them to the, the manager and counselor Fritz um, so that those can be researched, addressed, so Mr. Marzelli can come along and deal with them or, or whoever. Someone can give us some answers. And the sooner the better if you get the questions because the, it's always helpful, I find, to have the information beforehand so that I at least can have a chance to review those things before we have the meeting so we don't have to go through a presentation that I night. Kevin Moss tends to be in and out beside Carol. Okay, please forward them to the manager and then he'll forward them on. Okay. Well, that was a long discussion, but on the other hand, we got through four items right now. So, so all is not lost. Thank you very much. Um, we are moving on to item number 187, which has to do with the malt spiritus. Spiritus or spiritus? Divinus? I make a motion Beverage that we license. approve the annual malt spiritus and vinous liquor license for the Good Table LLC. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Jack? Tony would be here, but he's out of town tonight. Okay. <laughs> Any other discussion or questions? Just Half that we are a good member of our community. Don't know of any problems we've ever had with the, the good table or people leaving the good table. Okay. No further questions? Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. I was looking at the liquor license that the state put out. Hotel, uh, if you look at the Octonal food. Octonal food. You wonder if they were visiting one of the establishments when they did this. <laughs> <laughs> Octonal food on the official form. Sort of sad. Um, all Sorry, I know you're trying to move No, no. All in, all in favor? <laughs> Unanimous. Thank you. Moving on. Um, item number 188, which has to do with coastal waters and harbors ordinance. Council Roberts, you are the chair of ordinance. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I uh, was unable to make the meeting that we had done this, and as you know, you yourself had sat in in my place, I believe, on this one as well. I have many and hats. I believe Councilor Backer perhaps chaired it. I did ask David if he would be willing to give the explanation on this one since he put the work into it. Thank you. Mr. <coughs> Backer? I'd be happy to. Um, this was considered by the Ordinance Committee along with, uh, with the help of our new Harbor Master, Roger Long, um, and with input from our police chief, uh, Neil Williams. And Roger Long came in recently as Harbor Master and, you know, thankfully uh, came in with a lot of energy and I think he still has that energy. And one of the things he did was dust off our ordinance, which probably hadn't been reviewed in quite a while. And he found a number of inconsistencies with actual practice and suggested that, that we review it, and we did. Um, the primary uh, mooring harbors in Cape Elizabeth are Maiden Cove and Seal Cove, which everybody knows is Kettle Cove. Um, although there are other anchorages uh, with moorings available, those are the two primary ones. The uh, changes to the ordinance, although there are a fair number of little things that aren't of great substance, if I can just walk through three or four of the more substantive changes, um, it might be helpful in understanding this to set up for public hearing. Um, in the uh, ordinance currently, <coughs> the vessels are permitted to anchor for no more than 24 hours without um, the permission of the harbor master unless they're in a designated mooring field. Under the ordinance as changed, uh, vessels will be permitted to anchor indefinitely um, unless the harbor master determines that there's a problem with noise, um, 
other complaints or if there's an issue with safety for the vessel or others. And I think that that's a change that's required because of the constitutional challenge uh, that took place um, in mooring ordinances down in Florida. Um, another significant change to the ordinance is that mooring permits will be renewed on an annual basis rather than every two years. The ordinance as changed gives the harbor master the ability to uh, pull up um, moorings and anchors and anchor chains if the harbor master determines um, that those anchors, um, that those mooring anchors and chains uh, constitute a potential fouling hazard to other boats. That's something that was not permitted under the ordinance as it's currently written. Um, and the ordinance will require that anyone who is a permit holder um, of a mooring uh, pay for, at their own expense, uh, the inspection of the mooring. And although that was probably always the case, at least by implication, the way the ordinance was written, it wasn't clear who was required to pay for inspections, whether that was something to be paid by the town or whether it was something that would be paid by the person who held a mooring permit. So those are the primary things that are changed. There are lots of other little ones. Um, but as proposed, um, I think you'll find it to be a nice cleanup of an ordinance that probably hadn't been looked at in quite a while. Okay. Thank you very much. So is that, that's a motion? Um, I haven't made the motion yet, but I will make the motion to approve, <laughs> to, to, set, to set for public hearing uh, the ordinance um, as presented by the Ordinance Committee. Okay. Second. And I assume that public hearing would be set for Monday, July 11th at the next council meeting. If I didn't say that, that's exactly what I meant. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> See how I can read your mind like that? Um, okay, it's been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Okay, I just want to thank um, uh, both Chief Williams and Roger Long for their substantial work on this, as well as the members of the Ordinance Committee. All in favor of setting this for public hearing? It's unanimous. Thank you. The next item is item number 189.0405, which has to do with the land acquisition disposition policy. Um, Mr. McGovern, do you want to say anything about this? Or I was, it, yeah. this is, it was initially, arose out of an idea, um, a proposal from Councilor Roberts. Um, we've had several uh, land disposition matters before us as a council over the last few months, and uh, Councilor Roberts felt it was important to sort of codify, put together everything so there was a formal policy all in one place, because we've, you can tell from the language of this that it's come from several different sources, previous policies, but this sort of puts it all together in one place. So um, I want to thank Council Roberts for his idea, because I think it was a good one. And um, is there anything you'd like to No, say? I think you explained it well. Okay, great. Um, uh, I also, Council Roberts uh, had participated in the small working group. I didn't even really rise to a level of a full-blown committee, um, as had Maureen O'Meara, the town planner. Uh, to come up and Mike McGovern to come up with the draft that is before you. So, is there anyone who would like to make a motion on this matter? Council Roberts. Thank you. Um, I think one of the other councilors had requested that perhaps that, given that it is a, I guess, a significant policy, uh, that perhaps we would could send this out to public hearing as well, so that if people in the community have some thoughts on it, would like to see it. Uh, that we could, in fact, do that. Um, we're trying to keep the schedule light in in July, so I don't even have a problem with postponing to August. So I'll I'll recommend that uh, we put this out for a pup, this uh, proposed uh, land acquisition di disposition policy for public hearing at the regular August uh, meeting. Second. 
Okay. I moved and seconded. Is there discussion? Councilor uh -huh. Fritz? I couldn't tell if I that was I'm a sigh or if you were making a comment. Well, I'm, I'm actually seeing a conflict with the decision we kind of made before to make to do a workshop with the July meeting. So I'd rather load up the July meeting and have, <laughs> because part of the act has a board meeting that next council meeting night. Um, so the it's the July meeting July. night? July. Um, plus a series of meetings prior to the board meeting, and so we're not going to be able to get anyone here from the staff yet. It's early before the night of the July council right. meeting. So, I think it might be better to have a workshop after the August meeting. The, the, I'm, not, I'm not sure I'm following you. I just want to make sure I understand what you're saying. It, it, since we voted just a few minutes ago to have the RWS workshop in July, the night of the council meeting, it has now occurred to you that since there's an RWS meeting that night, we couldn't get anybody from staff that, from the RWS staff that night. Um, what time is the meeting? The board meeting. And okay. they're meeting starting at three. So you're thinking it would be better to have the land disposition, the acquisition disposition policy discussion, or uh, not discussion, but the um, public hearing on it at the July regular town council meeting and defer the RWS workshop okay. to the before or after the August council meeting? I have, no, I have no problem with that. Um, I'd change it to uh, July if the seconded wants to change the second as well. So. It would mean we'd have to go back. I don't know. We'd, we'd need to go back and just reconsider uh, our vote on 183 through 186, but I don't think that's going to be a problem if, if this, in light of this new information. Um, so do you, did you want to change your motion, Jack? I'll make my motion to read that we send this to public hearing on July, what's the date? 11th. On July 11th, 2005. Second. Okay. It's I have to withdraw my text. Okay. I'm not withdrawing my text. <laughs> well, but he withdrew, he, I think he just, do you want to withdraw no, your... Move it. Hang, such a small hang, matter as this. hang on one second, Councilman. Council Roberts, did you withdraw your motion? I was going to, but made people happy, but I'm not trying to belabor anything. So you wanted to amend your motion, change it from August to July? Yes. Okay. And so is there is no longer any motion on the table for August. So is there a second for? I think I heard somebody say it. second for the July meeting. Okay. Um, so we have before us a motion to have public hearing on this item at the July council meeting. Is there discussion on that? Council Moore. Yeah. Um, I just want to make sure I understand Councilor Fritz. On second Monday in July, the 11th? Our council meeting is on schedule for a Thursday, which is the regular Money that RWS meets. We rescheduled that. Is that? Well, then how come? Isn't that right? Is that? I don't remember that for July. I we said October and October. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, am I really? I'm sorry. I'm yeah, sorry. because we we've just done we did the coastal coastal waters and oh, harbors I'm for sorry. Monday, July 11th. I'm, I'm thinking it's, it's my fault. That's the workshop night. Thursday. Yeah. Right. Okay. I'm sorry. I, I, had <laughs> I think the heat has gotten us down. I'm <laughs> operating at half I speed here. Just I just want to clarify that. So that was <laughs> okay. Huge. But I'm now, sorry. but now, so there is no conflict. <laughs> we don't there need is, to revisit the other item. We don't need to revisit the other item, but I don't know if Councilor Robert wants to go back to August. Just leave it to July. George. Okay, <laughs> July. We'll leave it to July. Let's okay. hope it's not nice. I'm going to vote against it because I think it should push it to August for the original intention of not voting up to July meeting. Okay. Is there anybody? 
Okay, but the motion is for July at this moment. Okay, you're going to vote against it. I'm going to vote against it, and I think we should vote it down and go back to moving. Well, if it fails, you'll get your. Ch if it fails, you'll get your chance to propose August. Anybody else have any comments? Okay, the motion before us is to have the public hearing on this item um, at the July council meeting. All those in favor of doing that? Five opposed. One. Okay, great. I'm sorry. That's all right. <laughs> That's okay. Thank you. Uh, and thank you, Councillor Moles, for helping us figure that out. I think we would have been even more confused without your comment. So, okay. Um, so we will table that until uh, I not table it. I'm sorry. We will set the public hearing for July. Okay. Um, moving on, item number 190 has to do with smoking policy of Fort Williams. Um, Councillor Lynch asked for this item to be placed on the agenda, so I will turn it over to her. Okay. Um, in your package is a copy of an email that we all received from a uh, citizen of Cape Elizabeth asking that we ban smoking, um, as I understand it, um, not because of the health of smoking issue, but the trash issue and the um, in particular, the cigarette butts that are around the park. Um, I, when I received that um, from her, I thought that um, it was an idea that at least deserved some consideration. I'm, I'm personally not sure where I am on it, although I have to say I was a little bit taken aback yesterday as I sat at high school graduation and had someone whip out that cigarette <laughs> and smoke during the graduation ceremony. And, leave their butt on the um, amphitheater. So um, at any rate, my suggestion would be that we send this to the Fort Williams Advisory Commission and at least get their input on whether or not it is a problem in terms of trash and to what extent it's a problem. Is it a significant problem, insignificant? Are there ways to deal with this? So that's my suggestion. And and is that well, I would move that we um, ask the Fort Williams Advisory <coughs> Commission to give us some advice on whether or not smoking should be disallowed in the Fort Williams Park. Thank you. Is there a second for that motion? Okay. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Is there discussion? Councilor Curtin. Um, I, I really don't think we should attempt to regulate smoking in the outdoors. Uh, I, I don't think it's a health or safety issue. If it is a trash issue, um, I think maybe we could look at trash in all our parks and the consistency of what we provide containers and for other issues besides cigarette butts, um, the dog waste, whether we provide containers or not. There's inconsistency where we where we don't provide trash containers at Fort Williams. We don't express the heat. We do at the ball field, or at least line field that I know about. Um, so I think we have a consistent and inconsistent method at the present time. But I don't think that's an issue that the Fort Williams Advisory Committee ought to deal with the whole traffic policy. Um, and we could also look into whether we could provide recycling containers at, at some of the uh, areas. So I think it's a, a, a bigger issue. But, and I don't know who would appropriately deal with it other than us. So I think Okay. Other comments? Councilor Mole. Well, I don't smoke. Never have, never plan to smoke cigarettes. But I don't think we should continue to erode our citizens' freedoms by regulating that they can't smoke a legal <laughs> substance in a public open air place like a park. And I, I, I understand uh, the citizens' issue about the cigarette butts, and that is something that we 
you know, could address through some other means. I don't think this is an issue that we should be burdening the um, commission on, on looking at. It's not something that I think we should be regulating in that kind of manner by saying there's no smoke in Fort Williams Park. Um, okay, other comments? Councilor Backer? Um, I agree with uh, both Councilor Knowles and Councilor Fritz. Um, not a smoker. Um, but I'm, the problem, it seems to me, isn't the smoking, it's what people do with their butts when they're done with their cigarette. And whether it's to put some signage up to remind people what proper etiquette is with their cigarette butts, it's really no different than what you do with a gum wrapper or anything else. You put it in your pocket or somehow dispose of it other than throwing it on the ground. Um, I mean, some people do have the attitude that the world is my ashtray and they'll put their cigarette butt wherever they happen to be when they're done with it. And they need to be reminded that that's just not proper protocol. But I don't think that banning smoking in the park is the way to address it. Okay. My comment, I'm sorry, Councilor Moore. I was just going to add, it's, it's not a new issue. I think several times in many different state legislatures, people have proposed to add a deposit to a filtered cigarette tip as a way of keeping people from throwing them on the ground. Uh, so this is not a new issue. <coughs> These things come up. And as Councillor Backer more eloquently put than I, it is not an issue for us to regulate, but to remind people to be cleaner. Okay. If I could just weigh in on this one, um, I, I will not be supporting the motion because um, I'm really not in favor of putting ordinances on the books or even, uh, first of all, I don't want to burden the Fort Williams Advisory Commission but because even if they recommended uh, that there should be no smoking in the park, I think that it's unenforceable and I'm not really in favor of putting unenforceable ordinances on the books. I too am not a smoker, um, but as Councilor Mould points out, it's legal and as Councilor Backer points out, um, it's not the smoking that's the problem, it's the trash, the litter that's the problem. And by, by saying that there would be no smoking at Fort Williams, you'd be penalizing even those smokers who put their, took their cigarette butts home with them. Um, and I just don't think, I think it's unenforceable in the first place, but I don't think we should be doing that either. So, so I, I would withdraw my motion. I can count to four. I was putting it forth at the request of a citizen. Um, but I do hope that we can look into what to do with the solid waste issue, the cigarette butts. Okay. Thank you. So there is no motion before us. It's been withdrawn. Um, so I think we're done with this issue. Thank you very much. Um, Action number 191, year-end budget transfers. Mr. McGovern? Yes. Uh, due primarily to the winter, uh, but also a number of other areas, a number of accounts uh, need some supplemental appropriation. Uh, I put a spreadsheet with you that shows the different amounts. Fortunately, uh, uh, FEMA uh, has de declared us a disaster area a number of times, and that's going to pay the, 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 the biggest uh, hunk of this, which was in public works, which was almost $80,000. Anyway, it's just, I'll read a little bit aloud. Insurance, 6000 Employee benefits, this was because of budgeting error, 364. Police overtime because of illnesses, 4295 extra. Public works, 78756 again to be reimbursed. And the three heating accounts, town hall, 1700 more. The town center fire station, 8400 more. The Cape Cod uh, fire station, 1100 more. And the tree budget, uh, primarily, we're noticing more and more dead trees. Uh, but this is particular some I've met with the next door neighbor. We have a number right along the edge of the driveway here we want to get removed that have been eaten up by uh, litter sweet. Okay. Uh, dying off and falling into the parking lot. Is there a motion? Well, I, I would move that we um, amend the um, following department's um, appropriations to the amounts indicated on our agenda. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Is there discussion? 
I hear none, but I, um, I did notice a, what I believe is a typo in the um, cover memo, the June 7th cover memo, the end of the second paragraph, the above amount total, I believe, to 61895 just so we can collect. Could have been an adding mistake. Could have been, <laughs> could have been anything. Um, but with that, we'll move the question. All in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Um, item 192, must be 0405, um, which has to do with town council goals. Mr. McGovern? Yes, the council at a recent workshop discussed the goals, recommended a couple of minor changes, and also extending the goal period uh, to the end of the council year. Uh, since the goals were originally done, uh, the council year was changed. So I think it's it's remarkable how much the council has achieved uh, so far. As you look at these different goals, we've made excellent progress. Thank you, thank you. We try. Um, I would note uh, that the only changes are those underlined. Um, so as you can see, they're pretty minor. Um, do I hear a motion? I move we uh, accept the amended town council goals that put forth in our packet. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. And item number 193.0405 has to do with um, negotiations with police association and um, before we make a motion to go into executive session um, I think I should say that we anticipate taking no vote is that correct under right. after this item so we will be turning off the TV cameras and retiring to the air conditioned room out back um, and um, I just want to go through, is there citizens' discussion of items not on the agenda? I just wanted to wish Deborah Lane a happy birthday. Happy birthday to our assistant manager. And I hear no, I see no citizens coming forward. So I would entertain a motion to go into executive session. Council Mole? Well, since we're not going to be coming back on the camera, and I am a camera hog, I did want to mention one more time that this Saturday is Family Fun Day. And for those of you that, and there are a lot of people that watch our council meetings from home. Uh, again, the parade's at 1030. We're going to have a great parade this year. We have extra units coming in to tour in our parade. The drum and bagpipe band, little motor scooters, race cars, uh, clowns on the, on the park. We have a drum and bagpipe concert. We have two jazz bands. We have a, then a rock band, then a talent show, a comic session, fun on the phone. Then we have a DJ, and then we have a, another rock band. Then we have two of our high school's finest rock bands, free refills, and then Red Beard and the Ramblers, followed at 9.30 by the fireworks. Now that I got all that in, I'm done. Thank you, Councillor Moll. Is there a motion to go into executive session? Councillor Lynch? I would move that we go into executive session in accordance with 1 MRSA section 405, paragraph 6D, to discuss negotiations with the Cape Elizabeth Police Benevolent Association, also known as the Police Union. Is there a second? Second. The moved and seconded. All in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you very much. We can turn off the cameras now. No.